Most of us already knew that Dr. Oz was a quack doctor and a con man and a fraud, but now we're learning how much of a sick, sadistic, torturer and murderer of innocent animals he is as well, which leads me to believe that he may actually be a sociopath. So Jezebel broke this story about how he and his authority at Columbia University tortured animals. And we're talking about hundreds of animals, including puppies even. Like, this is movie villain stuff here. So, Kylie Chung explains, Oz, the New Jersey resident who's currently running for U.S. Senate from Pennsylvania, was a principal investigator at the Columbia University Institute of Comparative Medicine Labs for years and assumed full scientific, administrative, and fiscal responsibility for the conduct of his studies. Over the course of 75 studies published in academic journals reviewed by Jezebel, Oz's team conducted experiments on at least 1,027 live animal subjects that included dogs, pigs, calves, rabbits, and small rodents. 34 of these experiments resulted in the deaths of at least 329 dogs, while two of his experiments killed 31 pigs and 38 experiments killed 661 rabbits and rodents. In the early 2000s, testimony from a whistleblower and veterinarian named Catherine Del Orto about Oz's research detailed extensive suffering inflicted on his team's canine test subjects, including multiple violations of the Animal Welfare Act, which sets minimum standards of care for dogs, cats, primates, rabbits, and other animals in the possession of animal dealers and laboratories. The law specifically requires researchers and breeders to use pain-relieving drugs or euthanasia on the animals and not use paralytics without anesthesia or experiment multiple times on the same animal. Del Orto testified that a dog experimented on by Oz's team experienced lethargy, vomiting, paralysis, and kidney failure, but wasn't euthanized for a full two days. Now, we're going to stop there. I will link you to this article if you want to get into the specific details, but they are very, very gruesome, so be warned. Now, these experiments took place between 1989 and 2010, and just to kind of explain to you how bad they were without getting into the specifics, there are laws that essentially govern the way that scientists are able to conduct experiments on live animals. And he broke those laws as well, not sedating animals before injecting them with medicine that caused pain and discomfort, leaving them there for a long time to suffer, disposing of dead animal bodies by throwing them in the garbage genuinely horrifying stuff here and do you know how in like those movies serial killer movies where at a young age the serial killer starts killing and torturing animals and that's like the one sign that something's up with them and they may be a serial killer one day this is what i envision with dr oz like that's the image that came to my mind when i read this story this is sociopath stuff here to torture these animals and ignore the law to violate the animal welfare act and have no regard for their pain and suffering i mean that is genuinely disturbing to hear to do these experiments on animals and follow proper protocols you should still feel a little bit of pain even if you believe you're doing that for the greater good like you should not feel ethically comfortable with that right it should make all normal people a little bit uneasy but he didn't even follow those laws he just straight up did what he needed to do or felt that he needed to do while not sedating them not euthanizing them letting animals suffer it's just genuinely disturbing and the usda ordered columbia university to pay two thousand dollars in fines and months after they paid these fines they defended oz so not only did they just get a slap on the wrist for torturing hundreds of animals, but they defended Oz and paid the fine happily. So it's genuinely sociopathic. And if you already didn't trust Dr. Oz, this should maximize your distrust in him. Because for someone to do that and not feel any guilt, seemingly, it's genuinely twisted. It's genuinely disturbing. Only a sociopath can torture animals and not feel anything about it. Just keep doing it. It's sick. Really sick shit.
Now, this isn't the only revelation to impact Dr. Oz's campaign, but because he's been, you know, in hot water as of late, as Matthew Gertz of Media Eye Illustrates, Fox News has now gone all in in attacking his opponent, John Fetterman, mentioning John Fetterman 120 times, which is six times more than other Senate Democratic candidates. And recently, Cook Political Report has shifted the race back to a toss up after saying it leans Democrat. Now, this comes after Fetterman's polling averages have decreased, even though Fetterman still does hold a four point lead, but they've decreased overall. But because John Fetterman is presumably viewed by Republicans as the biggest threat to Republicans taking back control of the Senate, well, they've dedicated all of their uh, shots at John Fetterman. And it seems like the attacks, the smears are working, despite Republicans not really d trusting Dr. Oz. That was a really brutal primary, and you had even his old opponent, Kathy Barnes, saying, no, I'm not endorsing him. And yet Fox News, right-wing propaganda, they're there to clean up the mess that Dr. Oz made during the primary. It just goes to show you how powerful right-wing propaganda is. They can get people to believe some deranged things. When people like Dr. Oz, they've proven that they are frauds. They are phonies. This is the Republican equivalent of Hillary Clinton. And yet, Fox News was able to rehabilitate him and, and in essence, save his dying campaign. Now, that's not to say that it's a foregone conclusion that Oz is going to come up and defeat Fetterman. Fetterman is still in the lead. But would I be surprised if Oz did actually pull out a dub? No, I wouldn't. Because again, right-wing propaganda is absolutely powerful and they have the capacity to essentially brainwash their viewers. Now, I wanna share an ad put out by Fetterman that demonstrates how big of a fraud Oz was. This was really clever. Let's watch. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. With my diet, you can eat all you want, anytime you want. And you'll lose weight? Uh, you might. It's a free country. I've got the number one miracle in a bottle to burn your fat. Lose fat without diet or exercise. To burn stomach fat instantly disappears. I recommend a slow, steady gorging process combined with acyl horizontology. Garcinia Cambogia extract. Crystal sonic therapy. C. Buckthorn. Dr. Nick, this malpractice committee has received a few complaints against you. Dr. Oz being sued for advice he gave to viewers who struggle falling asleep. Dr. Oz is being accused of promoting quack treatments by some top physicians. Are you looking for a way to slash the cost of your medical expenses? How much would you pay for a pill that takes your body back 10 years? Call 1-600-DOCTORB. The B is for bargain. His empire and wealth have flourished. The most rewarding part was when he gave me my money. Bye-bye, everybody. That was just incredible. That was absolutely incredible. But I do hope that John Fetterman focuses on this new story as well, because this is this is really something else. Right. So now Pennsylvania voters know that Dr. Oz is not just a quack and a scam artist, but they know that he is a torturer of puppies. Literally, again, like this is movie villain shit that we're talking about here. So if they vote for him, despite knowing all of this, you have to blame them. You can't always chalk up these Republican victories to voters just being uninformed. Sometimes we have to place blame on voters. And whenever you think it's a cut and dry race where there's clearly a bad candidate versus a good candidate, who cares? Never underestimate the stupidity of American voters. That's not to say that I blame voters in every instance, but I think that American voters, they're so hyper polarized. They're so partisan. They're so within their own echo chambers that just... Hearing what right-wing media tells them, that's sufficient to get them to completely change their mind on a candidate. It's not just this race, right? Herschel Walker, after it was revealed that this supposedly pro-life candidate paid for the abortion of his girlfriend, got exposed by his own son as a liar, he saw a huge surge in donations after these allegations came to light. Why? Because Republicans apparently like these scandals. They only lean into them because, oh, well, these candidates are flawed, so maybe I should support them because they're flawed just like me. I don't know. Maybe being a shitty person personalizes Republicans. I don't know what makes the average Republican voter tick, but 
This is why our system is so messed up because Republican voters, they have no standards. They will, they will vote for any con man and not think twice about it so long as they could trigger the libs and keep the Democrat out of office. It's just genuinely disturbing. But again, we'll have to wait and see. It's not a foregone conclusion yet. I genuinely hope that Dr. Oz loses, but who knows what's going to happen at this point.